Thank you for joining me for the Columbia University Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation Admissions Online Info Session. I'm Kevin Smith, Director of Admissions and Financial Aid. Throughout our time today, I will cover information about our programs, facilities, admissions process, and the questions you've submitted online. Columbia University GSAP is located on the main campus of Columbia University Morningside Heights in Manhattan. Being centrally located in New York City allows our students to take advantage of everything the city has to offer. Avery Hall is GSAP's home building, which houses our administrative offices, program offices, and architecture studios. The studios are located on the fifth, sixth, and seventh floor, and our students have 24-hour access. We provide each student in our studio programs with a computer equipped with all the software needed throughout the program. Avery Hall is also home to Avery Library, which is the world's largest architecture library. In addition to Avery Hall, GSAP has space right next door in Fairweather Hall, where we have our urban planning lounge, real estate, uh, real estate development space, and our urban design studio. In the Shermerhorn building, also adjacent to Avery Hall, we have the newly remodeled fabrication shops at GSEP, known collectively as the Making Studio, which combine a range of workshops and project spaces for fabrication, 3D printing, robotics, and multimodal making, rapid prototyping, digital cutting, and tooling, alongside a space for large-scale mock-ups and experimentation. Cross-program workshops and 24-hour access enable students to explore, stage, tinker, reuse, and adapt. The Making Studio provides material, technical, and design support for all modeling, building, and making endeavors of our students. Its mission, its mission is to provide a continuum of support for physical experimentation and production, from heavy-duty sheet goods to precision work on fine models. Students of GSAP have access to the workshops after the completion of a university-level online training quiz and an in-shop orientation to policy and safety procedures. Also located in the Shermhorn building is the Preservation Technology Laboratory, which reopened in 2019 with expanded digital technology capacities, new scanning equipment, advanced data processing hardware and software, and non-destructive programming equipment like thermal cameras, humidity sensors, crack monitoring. The Preservation Technology Lab is intended to support studios and is at the center of many of our new courses. In addition to the physical resources provided on campus, we strive to keep students in touch with the professional world beyond Avery Hall. Career Services organizes events ranging from career fairs, workshops, alumni networking events, and panel discussions. This is a photo from our mentorship program kickoff. One of the many programs our career service offices runs, the alumni mentorship program matches alumni with current students to help them explore their career interests over the course of one academic year. Our alumni are well placed in leading practices, cultural institutions, and universities around the globe. Here's a recent selection of organizations employing GSAP alumni. Now I'm going to take some time to go over our different programs and missions processes. For more details about our curriculum, faculty, and courses, please visit our website and check out the online info sessions that were presented by each of the program offices. That can be found at arch.columbia.edu slash info session. GSEP currently offers master's degree programs, which are listed here. PhD programs and non-degree programs are also available. Both within GSAP and in conjunction with other schools at Columbia University, we provide opportunities for students to pursue dual degrees within GSAP. We offer seven different dual degree options seen here. And outside of GSAP, we offer five different dual degree opportunities with our urban planning program. If you choose to apply for a dual degree, you will be required to submit a separate application for each program. Though we're going to be focusing on our master's degree programs for this session, I'd like to note that uh, the Intro to Architecture program is now offering an urban planning focus as an option for the five-week intensive. The Intro to Architecture program is a pre-professional program for those who are interested in architecture or urban planning and may be considering them as a career, and for those students who have prior educational experience in design and may wish to complete additional study to prepare for an application to graduate school. 
Now we're going to spend some time to go over our application process. All of our master's programs share certain requirements, and they are the online application, uh, which includes a $75 application fee, three letters of recommendation, a personal statement, transcripts, which through the application process only need to be unofficial versions. These will be uploaded through the online application, and if an applicant is admitted and enrolls in the program, we will provide the information to have us receive the final official versions. A resume CV is also required. Applicants whose native language is not English must submit the test of English as a foreign language, the TOEFL. We currently only have one TOEFL exemption, and that is for students who have successfully completed two years of study in an English-speaking institution provided relevant transcripts can be submitted. Applicants will indicate their exemption status within the online application. Now we'll go into each of the programs to go over their unique requirements. The Master of Architecture program will require that applicants also submit GRE test results and a digital portfolio. Portfolios must be 20 PDF pages or less, which includes cover pages and table of contents, if applicable and the file should not exceed 32 megabytes. I'll go into a little bit more detail about the portfolio when I answer some of your submitted questions. There are some course prerequisites for the MARC program that include requirements in history, theory, course sequence, building technologies course sequence, and architectural graphic representation. You can read through those specific requirements on the website, but please keep in mind that those only need to be completed by the time a student enrolls in the program but don't need to be completed by the time you apply to the program. The MSCCCP program will require applicants to also submit GRE test results in a digital portfolio. The CCCP portfolio will also not be able to exceed 20 PDF pages and should not exceed 32 megabytes. The portfolio is typically different than what we would be submitting for an architecture portfolio. And uh, I'd like to highlight what the words of the program office has uh, kind of highlighted for their requirements, that visual acuity and interest in undertaking independent research and original projects are crucial for all applicants and the submission of a portfolio of writing or visual material is intended to provide the admissions committee with evidence of an applicant's area of interest and or skills, as well as preparation in the field he or she intends to pursue. It is not, however, necessary to have extensive experience in order to be admitted, but in the absence of such a background, it is very important that the character and strengths of a prospective student's work and research interests are documented and conveyed. The MS Historic Preservation Program will require applicants to submit the GRE test scores. The Urban Planning Program will also have the GRE test score requirement. The MSAAD program will re require the addition of a digital portfolio, but GRE scores are not required. Since the MSAAD program is a second professional degree, all applicants must have a first professional degree in architecture, five years eligible for licensure or its equivalent by the time they enroll in the program. The MSAUD program will also require a digital portfolio and does not require the GRE. Similar to the AAD program, students applying to the MSAUD program must have a first professional degree in architecture or landscape architecture, five years eligible for licensure or its equivalent by the time they start the program. The real estate development program will require applicants to submit either the GRE or the GMAT results with their application. We do not have a preference in regards to which tests you choose to take. This is a very important slide. These are hard deadlines for your application submission. So our deadlines are coming up with the first being the Master of Architecture on January 3rd, and the rest of the master's programs will be due by January 15th. So with that overview, I'm going to jump into some of the questions that you submitted online. I'm gonna start with some of the questions that specifically related to the application requirements. So the first one is, do you feel the suggested 20 pages is enough to properly convey the depth of applicants' proficiencies in their portfolio? Uh, 
So for this, it's important to keep in mind that that is a, a very specific requirement and it cannot exceed 20 pages. So within the context of that, you must find a way to make your work come through in those 20 pages or less. The next question is, will the portfolio be reviewed digitally or in print? All of the portfolios are reviewed digitally by faculty. So uh, they'll be reviewing them on a laptop or a desktop computer. And it's good for you to keep that in mind as you put it together and decide what you want to convey through your portfolio. Are faculty members the ones who choose the applicants and so view the portfolios? Yes, so faculty will be reviewing every single application that is submitted to our programs. Um, that's across the board for each of the programs. It is faculty that are reviewing all aspects. They're reading the port, they're looking at the portfolio, reading the personal statements, looking at the letters of recommendation, the transcripts, the test scores, the entire application. What is the minimum score requirement of GRE and IELTS? So just I want to take a moment to point out that we do not currently accept the IELTS test for proof of English language proficiency. We currently only accept the TOEFL score. We don't currently have a posted minimum for either of those tests. And it's good to keep in mind that you know when the faculty are reviewing the materials, uh, they're looking at them holistically. So faculty are looking at all aspects of what's submitted. So that's, as I said, the, the personal statement, the transcripts, the resume, the portfolio, the letters of recommendation. They're looking at that all as a whole, and that's what they'll uh, be reviewing and taking into consideration when they're looking at your, your file. So don't let one aspect, whether it's the test scores or the transcripts, feel like that's going to be the make it or break it of your application. It's all reviewed as a whole. And you should think of it in that context. Uh, and to the next question, would you say that certain application materials hold more importance than other materials? Um, it's the same thing. So they're, they're looking at all aspects of the application. So um, depending on an applicant's background, things may have more or less weight, but it's all looked at holistically. Uh, does GSAP have an application fee waiver policy in place? Um, we do, we do. So uh, fee waivers are granted to McNair scholars, applicants in the Peace Corps or the military, and those who currently receive financial aid from their home institutions. Um, we may need additional documentation, but don't hesitate to reach out to our office if you have any questions about whether or not you qualify for an application fee waiver. When will applicants likely find out about admissions decisions? We will be releasing our admissions decisions at the beginning of March. So everybody who's submitted a completed application with all their required materials by the application deadline will receive their admissions decision by the first week of March and then we will require a response for you to decide by April 15th. What would be the best way to compensate for a low GMAT score? Um, you know, and this question I think can relate to the GRE scores or transcripts or any aspect of the application really. Um, since it is looked at holistically and they're reviewing all aspects, you can take the pieces that you still have control over and make sure that you pour your full energy into those. If you're not currently enrolled in school, then you can't do anything about what your transcripts were. Um, if you don't have time to retake a GRE or a GMAT or a TOEFL exam, um, focus your energy elsewhere in the application process, on your portfolio, on your personal statement. Make sure you're choosing the correct recommenders. So just really focus your energy where you can still make a difference. Is there a preference between professional and academic recommendation letters? We don't have a preference. So with the recommenders, we want to hear from somebody who's going to be able to speak to your capacities to do well in this program, somebody who really knows you. Uh, it's less important that they hold a, 
a, a title worth noting than what they actually write about you. Uh, we want to make sure that they truly know you and that the, their recommendation is going to be a reflection of who you would be coming into this program. That goes far beyond what any title could do. For students who are maybe a little further removed from academia, whether you've been out of school for a year or 10 years, depending on your relationship with the former faculty members, maybe it won't make sense to have an academic recommendation, and vice versa. Maybe if you've only had part-time internships, uh, it wouldn't necessarily make sense to have a professional recommendation. So it's a very individualized decision that you have to make in regards to who you ask to write that. But just want to emphasize again that they should know you personally and be able to write a recommendation based on who you are now as an applicant and what you'll um, be bringing to the program. Beyond academic achievement, what distinguishes candidates from, for the program? Um, so within the application materials that you're submitting, that's where we're going to see what distinguishes you. Um, so that's in the form of the portfolio, in the personal statement, in the recommendation letters, you know, outside of the objective materials that you submit. Here's a question. Being a native New Yorker, are my chances of getting into the program heightened or is preference given to applicants who represent a wider range of geographic backgrounds? So this question, you know, we want a diverse class in GSAP. And that's diversity across all spectrums. So of course we want native New Yorkers, we want students from all over the globe, um, regardless of where they're coming from. And so it does not hurt or help your chances coming from any particular area. Um, you as an individual, you know, will add to the diversity of our class. And that's what's really important to further the discourse within each of the contexts of our classrooms, of our lectures, um, and just the overall community here at GSAP. My current university does not offer history of architecture. Can online courses count for prerequisites? Yes, so as long as they meet the other requirements, it has to be a fully accredited college or university offering the course, it has to meet the, the point uh, requirement or the credit requirement for that but it is absolutely fine to do that online if that's what you choose to do. Uh, it's important to note that that needs to be completed by the time you enroll, not by the time you apply and not after you're here. So any time before you enroll, that needs to be completed. What are the best resources available to applicants for advice on GSAP's admissions process? There are many resources available. Um, you watching this video is a great step, making sure you take advantage of everything that we have on our website. That's going to be huge for you. Make sure you understand the different curriculums, watch the other info sessions. If you're able to come to campus, take advantage of that fact. Uh, we have student-led tours throughout the year. Currently, our final reviews are going on, which we make open and available to prospective students. Um, there's the GSAP conversations online, so there's lots of different ways you can get to know the programs better, um, and just knowing more about the programs should in turn help make you uh, more aware of what we're looking for to try to become a part of this community. How could I prepare myself between now and applications in fall 2020 to help my chances of admittance? So once again, it's, it's a lot of the, those same things, but um, you know, if you are not applying this year, you're applying for a future year, you might also consider uh, taking some extra coursework towards this area. You might consider doing one of the summer programs here uh, or elsewhere, really just taking advantage of every resource that is available to you that you have the time and the means to, to take part in. I had a good GRE score, but a weak writing portion. Will that negatively affect my chances of admission? Um, just going back to what I've already stated, you know, it's really looking at your application as a whole. So um, don't let that one aspect uh, bog you down and really think about it in the context of the larger application and the fact that faculty are going to be seeing all of these different aspects with it. 
What STEM background is expected or required of prospective uh, urban planning students? We don't have any hard requirements for students applying to the urban planning program. Um, you know, if you have those, those courses in your background, that's great. If you have urbanism in your, directly in your background, that's great. Um, but we have applicants from so many different backgrounds that have found their way to this program through one way or another. And they all, all of you have this passion, which is why you've found your way here. Um, so really just kind of fan those flames as you, as you continue on. Uh, can I enter the MS Red program if I have international master degree of architecture? Of course, uh, we definitely encourage you to do that. And I think this also highlights the fact that we do have our dual degree options. Um, students can also cross register for our programs. Um, but really those different perspectives for each of the programs, having real estate development students taking architecture courses, vice versa, having urban planning students taking those courses. Um, it just adds to the conversation and the, the different ideas that are going to come through in those classes. It really helps push everybody. Are there any documents required that need to be submitted as proof to indicate English is a native language as an international student since there is no TOEFL GRE required? So just make sure that you closely read the online application and you select the correct affirmation of your exemption status and then that'll be supported by transcripts in the, in the case where it is because of um, your prior educational background. Can the statement of purpose exceed 500 words? What is the upper limit? No. Uh, similar to the portfolio, keeping it under 20 PDFs uh, pages, you know, the finding your voice in the 500 words or less is really what we're looking for in the personal statement. So really craft that and, and make sure that it's appropriate and within that word limit. So I'm gonna go to some questions about tuition and aid. Uh, what, is the, what are the fee structures? So currently tuition is about 29,490 per semester, 58,980 for a year for the, the programs that run in the fall and spring and then uh, 88,470 for the programs that run three semesters. There are some additional fees, health services, um, facilities fees. There's also for international students and international students fees. Um, they're all broken down on our website for you, but they're given in the, the framework of the year, so the academic year. So the MR, for instance, is, is giving you the the tuition and fees per year, whereas the three semester programs, it's giving you that full breakdown of the all three semesters combined. So when you're looking at it on the GSAP website, you'll see it in that context, and that should hopefully help you better understand what those will look like for you. The uh, scholarships will be dispersed in even amounts if you receive them uh, across the semesters that you're enrolled in that program. So what is the basis of scholarships for international applicants? Um, is the scholarship awarded based on merit, GRE, portfolio, or recommendation, or rather need-based? So the scholarships are for all students. So all students, domestic and international, are considered for scholarships. Um, and that is a combination of merit and need for those that select to fill out the scholarship application. Within the online application, there's a scholarship application that is not mandatory, but it's there if you'd like to have need as a factor for our consideration of your scholarship. Um, it won't show up unless you select the affirmation that you'd like to submit it. So once you do that and you move to the next page in the application, you'll see the scholarship application and you can fill that out. But just to reiterate, all students are given consideration regardless as to whether or not they're um, a U.S. citizen, permanent resident, or an international student. What types of scholarships and grants are offered? So I just mentioned the merit scholarships, um, but we also have interschool fellowships students can apply for. Um, 
And I will speak a little bit more about the assistantships, but basically those are the main forms of aid. So it's the scholarships, fellowships, assistantships, um, those are internal to the school. You're at a time right now, if you're applying for the coming school year, where you should really be investigating external scholarships as well. So within our website, we have some resources available that you can check out. Uh, also look into online um, scholarship search engines, websites like FastWeb, Scholarly, scholarships.com. Um, those will all have some resources, but this is the time of year when their applications typically open up um, for the coming school year. So if that's going to be something you want to consider, I would recommend over this winter break, if you're on break, you start looking at that now. Um, don't wait to do that until you've been admitted somewhere. It'll be typically too late by that point for, for most of those scholarships. When will financial aid awards be presented? So we let the students know of the merit scholarship within the admissions decision letter. So you'll see the amount that will be awarded to you for the, the year. So for the two semester programs, that covers two semesters and it's divided evenly. If you're admitted and receive scholarship for one of the three semester programs, the MSAAD, MSAUD, or MSRED, then that amount will be divided across the three semesters. In terms of financial aid, can I supplement the tuition uh, as a TA or as a RA? So our uh, teaching assistantship positions do come with uh, tuition uh, benefit. Uh, essentially, to your perspective, it would seem the same as a scholarship. It's an amount that gets dispersed directly towards your tuition. Uh, then on top of that, there is uh, a salary for the work that you're actually completed. And that will vary slightly based on your appointment. Um, but that's very nice. Students apply uh, going into each semester. Uh, depending on the appointment, some of them will be for two semesters. Some of them will be for one semester, but each of the programs handles their own uh, teaching assistant positions in their own way. Are the indicated tuition fees applicable for international students? Yes, so on the website, when you see the breakdown, it's essentially all the same except for the international students fee, um, which is a, a small fee each semester. Um, what is the workload like for the Masters of Science? Can I keep a part-time job to help me pay for my studies? A lot of students in the program do work while they're enrolled. Uh, that is a very personal choice for you to make, and um, there are so many different factors that come into play with that. Uh, how much time you need, different times of the semester for being here in school, doing your work, getting that done, your own ability to manage your time, how well you can balance that. Um, but absolutely, a lot of students do work while they're enrolled. It is more difficult during certain times of the year in certain programs. Um, the three semesters in, uh, programs in particular have a very intensive start that sometimes students are not used to, even if they're coming directly from another academic program. Uh, and that makes it challenging to work, but students still, when they need to, they find a way to make that work. Uh, I've lived and worked full-time in New York City, but I've never been a full-time student in New York. Do you have any advice on ways to prepare to financially support myself? Uh, just planning. Really, that is the best thing you can do. So making sure that once you receive your admissions decision, you're working out what that looks like for you, not just for your first semester, but for the entire time that you're in school. Make sure that you have a plan moving forward. Um, if you need help with that, you, re you can reach out to me in the Office of Admission. Um, you connect, can connect with our Central Student Financial Services Office, who has a lot of expertise when it comes to different types of loans, if that's an option you're going to have to take. But really just making sure that um, you have those pieces in place when you enroll in the program. As you start to do that planning, yes, New York City is an expensive city, but that is just part of what you're going to factor in. And 
um, you know, from my perspective, the benefits uh, far outweigh any negative impact. Uh, would like to know the financial aid and tuition options as well as housing. Uh, so we do have some housing that's available and it is subsidized by the university, so it's a little below market rate for the area, but it's based on a lottery system. So uh, if you're admitted and you're deciding to enroll, you'll indicate that you'd like to be considered for housing, and then you'll be entered into the housing lottery, and hopefully you'll get one of those spots. Outside of that, we do try to connect you with other students planning on enrolling in the program so that you can hopefully connect with them ahead of time, um, help find, you know, help each other find an apartment. Hopefully one of you's already in New York or has a way or connection to be able to um, get that happening. But we do try to assist in that process to the greatest extent that we can. Uh, what is the procedure for acquiring financial aid? So in addition to the things I mentioned, the students that are U.S. citizens or permanent residents that are planning on applying for the FAFSA, uh, you should go ahead and do that uh, if you're applying for this coming school year. Uh, at the graduate level, it's really just in the form of loans and potentially work study, but it's absolutely something you can and should take advantage of if you're thinking about doing that. Um, even if it's just to have the option available. As, you, you know, as you're planning for your time here, uh, you need to make sure you have all of those resources available. What is the fee breakup and what are the living expenses on or off campus? Um, I've already gone over the tuition and fees. The living expenses, uh, that will vary depending on where and how you get your apartment, uh, what your lifestyle is like. Um, but, you know, that's once again an opportunity for you when you have the chance to come to campus, to connect with current students in the program, make sure to ask them those types of questions. Ask them how they manage their day-to-day -day in addition to what they're doing in the classroom. Um, see how relevant that is to your current lifestyle and what you expect it to be when you're here in New York to really help shape what that would be and help shape your planning. Uh, are deferrals to enter GSET possible if we need an additional year to work and or apply for outside scholarships in order to attend Columbia? Uh, unfortunately, we do not offer deferrals. So uh, here's some other questions. So what is the duration of the course? Uh, so I don't think I mentioned all of them. Most, uh, the four of the programs are two semester programs per year. So the Master of Architecture takes three years to complete. It's two semesters a year. So you do a fall, spring, fall, spring, fall, spring. The Urban Planning, Historic Preservation, and Critical Curatorial and Conceptual Practices are each two-year programs that consist of fall, spring semesters. The Advanced Architectural Design, Architecture and Urban Design, and Real Estate Development programs are three semester programs. So you'll start those in the summer, and you'll do a summer, fall, and a spring term. Um, there's no option to do those starting at another time. That's, it's really just summer, fall, spring. So you have to start in the summer. This year, it's June 1st. Visa process for international students. So students that decide to enroll, uh, we'll work with our International Student and Scholars Office to work on their visa process to get the proper documentation both to the university and from the university to, to make that happen. Um, certain countries have a slightly more challenging process than others, but our ISSO office is very experienced with that, and so they're a great resource. If you're unsure about anything and you want to start looking into that now, by all means, start looking at their website. They have great tutorials and guides that'll help you understand what you're going to need uh, if you're admitted and decide to enroll. Uh, what types of events are there in which I can meet people currently working in my desired field? So that ties back into what the Career Services Office is doing. Um, you know, they're always, uh, every semester, putting on events, meeting with current students in the program, helping them uh, get a, a plan moving forward. Uh, really making those connections while you're a student is very important to them, and I think it's clearly important to you that you'll have those resources available. So they work very hard to make sure that that's a possibility for you. 
Um, the job placement rate is incredible across the program, so it's really clearly effective practice um, and something that as a student, you'll want to make sure that you make the time uh, to do that and make that a priority on top of everything else you're doing um, because that is going to help you down the road. Uh, what percent of students work well in graduate programs at Columbia? I don't know the exact percentage, but I do know that a lot of our students are working. Uh, what types of on-campus jobs are available to graduate students? Are they competitive, and what is the timeline for applications to those? There's several different types of on-campus employment. Um, when you go to our website and go to the Human Resources page, you'll see more information about uh, casual employees. That's a, a standard on-campus job that students can apply for. Uh, jobs are opening throughout the year, and as they open, you'll apply. Throughout the semester, you cannot work in an on-campus job more than 20 hours per week. So it's good to keep that in mind with your planning that you know if you're expecting to work 30 hours a week, that's not an option. Um, if you've received federal work study, there are some on-campus jobs that are specifically for work study students that have that funding set aside. So um, it's still competitive, but they are slightly narrower field of options um, for just those students. Uh, how and when do students utilize career services and the alumni network? Now that's throughout the time that you're a student here. You'll be utilizing those resources. I think just by the nature of what you're doing and, and your trajectory, most students are doing the most during their second year of study. But you know that doesn't mean that you should not take advantage of the offerings throughout your first semester, your second semester, through every semester that you're here. Um, their, their options are available, and you should absolutely take advantage. Uh, here's one. I have asked a couple of architecture schools about their master's program for students with no architectural background with clarity as to whether there would be a semester or opportunity to catch up based on my research in this school. Would you say the master's architecture program facilitates learning for all types of students or all student types? Um, definitely. So, you know, it's uh, it's been an observation by a faculty that um, you know, by the end of the first semester that it's often difficult for them to be able to tell students that are from an architecture background and those that aren't from an architecture background. Uh, if you don't have an architecture background, then you're bringing something else to the program, uh, you know, from your own personal academic and personal background. Uh, so everybody in their own way is catching up in some area. Uh, it just takes different forms for each of the students. So uh, it's important to keep that in mind, you know, as you're applying to the program and you're maybe worried about how you're going to be able to jump right in and, and be, be able to keep pace in the studio. You know, that's something where we, we have lots of additional resources. Um, we have courses that focus on visual studies and representations. Uh, that will help guide you and help you get to that next level as quickly as possible. You know, so um, we are here to support that. And it goes back also to making sure that we have a diversity of ideas in the classroom. Um, we don't want an entire class of students with architecture backgrounds. We'd be missing something if we did that. So, you know, we want to see all of you do well here. Uh, I've also been told by these aforementioned schools that I should not consider applying if I don't have any financial assistance because not even loans would be able to help the costs. Um, how realistic were they? So you don't know what your scholarship is going to be uh, until you apply, until you've gone through the process. So I think it's sad that someone would say that to a prospective student, but um, the reality is, is that it's expensive, but you don't know what your scholarship and the, your funding package will look like until you've applied, and until you've gone through that process. And there are resources available. So 
um, you know, make sure you take advantage of the external scholarships, make sure you're taking advantage of the fellowships that are available, making sure you're hitting all the timelines and applications for the TA ships, um, making sure you take advantage of all those things. But of course, you should apply and, um, and put yourself out there and see what's possible. Are there opportunities to study for a semester internationally? Um, not for our master's programs for a full semester. Uh, most of our students throughout their time here will be traveling almost every semester they're in the program. Um, most of that travel is subsidized as well. So um, it's a crucial part of having you understand um, are your place in the global context, what you're focusing on, what you're doing with your research and your projects, making sure you understand those in the local terms and in the, in the grander scheme of things. So travel is integrated and is a crucial part of what we do, but as far as a full semester, no, that would not be a part of it. Uh, is the MS in Architecture and Urban Design a STEM accredited course? How many years post OPT can an international student work in the United States? So we actually have three of our programs that have the STEM designation, the MARC, the MSAAD, and the MSAUD. So what that means is that uh, eligible uh, international students would be able to extend their optical, optical practical training for an additional 24 months. Um, of OPT authorization after the initial um, 12 months of OPT to work in the US. Uh, and it's also just a, a moment to also identify that the Master of Architecture is a NAB accredited program as a first professional degree. Uh, and when will we find out if we're admitted? So uh, I believe I already said that, but that's March 1st, so make sure, or the first week of March, so make sure that you get all the other deadlines and that will help us get you a decision on time. Um, I believe that's all the questions that we have for, for this for today. Um, so thank you again for joining me for this online info session. Uh, I hope you found the information useful. Uh, I think that you know, as you go through the process, you should feel free to reach out to our office at any time. Uh, the email address is there in the slide. Uh, it's arch underscore, which is not there, that you can't see it, arch underscore admissions at columbia.edu. And the website is arch.columbia.edu slash admissions. Uh, you know, also, you know, feel free to reach out to me directly. My email address is my name, kevin.smith at columbia.edu. Uh, you can check out the archived online info sessions from each of the programs on our website at arch.columbia.edu slash info dash session. And you can also check out our podcast, the GSAP Conversations, which can be found on iTunes, Spotify, Player FM, or Stitcher. So thank you all again. Have a great day.